Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Larkin again with Premiere Pro Toots. Our Twitter follower, DivaGamerBR, has asked us a simple question about color correction. And that's kind of led me to bring you this tutorial. And because I think that there's a lot of confusion with how to get footage looking the way that you want to. Um, a lot of people will tell you that you need to use a complex program like DaVinci or SpeedGrade or Colorista or Magic Bullet or a ton of different things to get really neat and complex looks. And I, although I know how to use all these programs, I find to get things done quick, a lot of times I avoid them just to use very simple effects within Premiere Pro. Now, I'm using a new MacBook Pro, and the GPU acceleration with the Mercury Playback Engine isn't available. But if it is, this tutorial is specifically built for you, as both effects that I'm going to use to get the look that you need are going to be uh, graphics processor-enabled effects that are going to be accelerated actually by your graphics processor. So, it's two effects that I normally just just throw on the clip and tweak to the point where it looks good and that's normally all I need. Every once in a while I'll throw something else on but that's not too often. Um, first of all we're gonna take a look at this clip. Now this is another dummy clip for you guys. This is actually a clip from a music video that I did a while ago. It's for a band called Capital and um, if you look below you can check out the video. You can click it, go look at it, like it, subscribe to Capital's channel because we have a couple more videos coming up for them. Um, this was actually a pretty cool video to do because um, it was shot, edited, and released in less than four hours. If you guys stay tuned and subscribe to this channel, I'm going to be showing you what methods I use to do videos that quick and um, a lot of time-saving shortcuts that a lot of people just don't even think about because I don't know. But anyway, um, let's get into this. So the first effect that I normally always apply to my footage, and first of all, before we get into this, I shoot on a DSLR. Um, I have a couple different cameras that I shoot on. I primarily shoot on a Canon 60D. And um, one of the big things to make color correction easy for me is Technicolor's CineStyle preset. And you can get that. You can download it from Technicolor's site. Um, I'll include the link below in the description. And pretty much what that does is it lowers the contrast to a point where it makes it a lot easier to color correct and post. So you're not clipping your highlights and you're not squashing your blacks and there's not too many compression artifacts or anything like that. And what you get is an image that's that looks to be really, really flat, but the purpose of that is to add ease for color correction. I strongly advise if you're doing any kind of hobbyist to pro level videography to download and install the Technicolor preset onto your DSLR. It saves you a ton of time and it really makes your footage look a lot better. Um, okay, so once again, let's get into this. Um, the first effect we're gonna apply is RGB curves. And as you can see over here, it's a 32-bit uh, plugin and it's graphics accelerated. Once again, the MacBook Pros aren't supported yet by Adobe for graphics acceleration, but if you have an NVIDIA card, um, that it supports Mercury Playback Engine. All this is going to be handled by your graphics card and you can put this on there with little to no lag. Um, the the um, effects editor for RGB curves looks a little bit like this. And pretty much what you're dealing with is a linear idea of what's going on with the color in your video. Now the first one is going to be your Luma or your RGB combo. And what this does is it controls the brightness. And on all four of the curves, it goes from the bottom, which is the darkest pixels, to the top, which is the brightest pixels. And um, what you could do is you can manipulate these curves to bend and shape the way the colors interact with each other via this grid right here. And what I do normally is the first thing I do is I normally go right to here and I'll start dropping the blacks a little bit to give myself a little bit more contrast. right about to there just for a tester and um, I'll do the same thing at the very top to bring up my highlights and to me this isn't looking dark enough so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the very bottom corner where the dark where the uh, blacks are I'm gonna bring those in till I start actually crushing the blacks a little bit which means I am taking out a lot of the black information below a certain point on the scale I'm gonna move this little curve over here just a little bit more and then I'm going to go into the midtones. I'm going to bring those out a little bit just to get a little bit of color in his cheeks. 
going to drop this back down a little bit. And since this was a metal video, um, we're going to go ahead and look through this. I'm going to disable the audio so it doesn't scream in your ear. Um, since this is a metal video, we're going to add like a little bit of a mood to it. And um, one, of the, one of the things I always do for color correction is um, I try to stop on a pretty crystal clear frame so you can get an idea of what you're doing. And I didn't make Mikey look too good there, but unfortunately that's going to be our only crystal clear frame that we have to work with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called like a little cross processing. And I'm going to drop the reds out of the shadows, but I'm going to pick them up in the highlights. So I'm restoring the skin colors, but if you notice through here, we have like almost a bluish greenish tint that gives it kind of a, a spooky vibe, if you will. And um, I'm going to do the exact opposite with my blue channel. So I'm going to pick that up in the, um, in the shadows. So get a little bit bluer in the shadows. And up in the top, I'm going to drop it out. So now I have this neat kind of cross-processed look. And with the greens, I really just use the green to compensate for what's going on in, in between these. I don't really do too much with the green because it doesn't really do too much for the skin tones. But what I'll do is I'm just going to poke it up just a little bit here and drop it down just a little bit here to give it a little bit more of a look. Okay. So I'm just going to do a couple quick adjustments right here. And we have really quickly a really nice look for this footage. Now if you don't have the Technicolor preset installed on your camera, a lot of times you're not going to have to do that initial step of going in and adding contrast in. You'll still probably want to add a little bit of contrast, but it's not going to be as necessary um, if you don't have it installed. I would still advise getting it installed because what happens when the camera adds contrast is it compresses everything below and above a certain level and what you'll deal with is compression artifacts and just loss of digital information that you really want to keep until you get to the editing bay and you can decide and post what pixels you want to drop off and what brightness and luminance values you want to drop off. So just looking through we already have a really really nice contrasty look everything's real clear and um, that's pretty much good to go. So I'm going to twirl that down. And um, one of the things about this is it's just a little bit to the saturation is bugging me. And you can go and add um, the hue levels and saturation. But you'll see that that's not GPU accelerated. So what I typically do is I add the tint effect, which is GPU accelerated. And the tint effect is going to make it black and white. But all I do is I dial it back till the point where I think the, the saturation looks really nice. And let's see, I'm going to say right about 19%. Let's see, before, after. Eh, you know what, I'll dial it back just a little bit. So I took 10% of the saturation out. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take 15% out. So just mark in 15%. And um, I'm going to go back to my curves because of that. And I'm still going to drop this just a little bit to give it a little bit more contrast. And our final look looks pretty neat. So let's check out our before. And I could do this real easily by taking a, um, taking a copy of the composition, putting it right here, and going and deleting the effects off of it. So I can just go in and take this off before, before, after, before, after, before, after. Really neat, high contrasty look. And if you kind of understand what I'm talking about here, there's going to be a lot that you can do with RGB curves. You can correct white balance issues. You can correct just general tint issues and do a lot of things with RGB curves that would be a whole lot more complicated in a lot of different applications like the three-way color corrector I've used it but it just it seems like a little bit too complicated of a process when you just need to do something simple like boost the contrast and go in and do some minor tint adjustments anyways that's the way I do things it's not necessarily the right way it's just a really easy way for me and I hope that helps someone out so if you like this tutorial Please do yourself a favor and subscribe to this channel because I'm going to have a bunch of tutorials coming out within the next couple weeks and on and on into the future. And if you need any help on your, on your project, if you're working on something right now 
and you're just pulling your hair out trying to figure something out, please feel free to tweet at Premier Pro Toots on Twitter, obviously, and I'll do what I can to get back to you as soon as humanly possible and help you out on there. Once again, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. Thank you very, very much, and you guys have a good day.